Welcome back to Oakhaven. We are in the middle of November right now, and November is a great time to be out taking care of invasives on your property. It's nice because you can work, the weather is a little cooler, you can work in long sleeves and uh, long pants and not worry about it being so hot. It's also nice because a lot of the, the non-native invasives are really evident at this time of year. While most of the native plants have uh, gone to sleep for the winter, they understand that uh, um, conditions are right for this, this long stretch of really hard weather that's coming on. The non-natives don't have that, in, uh, they, they don't understand that. You know, they've only been around for a few hundred years, so they don't understand what the weather is that's gonna go on. Obviously, I'm personifying a little bit, but, uh, um, but so you get things like the honeysuckle here, which is still in leaf, even though most of the other shrubs are not in leaf. So if I'm looking for honeysuckles, um, they're really obvious. The thing that we're focusing on right now that is super obvious uh, in the fall is this, which is burning bush. Burning bush, which is planted because it has this great fall foliage. Um, so people's landscaping, they want to have this fall foliage. Uh, so you see that when you're driving around, but when we have it, we have it scattered through our woods because those that plant it in their, their landscape, uh, those plants, those bushes produce seeds, the birds take them and then scatter them through the natural areas, and then we end up with a carpet of this invasive plant that, uh, that starts choking out the native plants. So what do we do when we find that? As we're, you, know, you scan over the forest floor and there's bright red flags saying, take me, take me. So if it's small like this, we will just, um, just weed it out of the ground even though it's got a super massive root system, it seems like it's so tightly wound that uh, it does pull fairly easily. Um, Julie was just out and was using a shovel, so just helping it out with a shovel. And how many plants did you say you pulled out? 127. 127 plants along, just basically along the driveway here. Um, so that's, weeding certainly works well for that, but it's kind of time consuming. Um, we don't use a, a foliar spray when the leaves are starting to turn because uh, it won't draw it in um, to the roots. So uh, during the summer, we might use a foliar spray and use a like a 2% glyphosate uh, to spray um, burning bush, but we do not do that right now. Right now we would do the weeding, or if it's about this size, I'll come through with a brush cutter and I'll cut it off and we'll treat it with a 20% glyphosate solution. Uh, again, just a very little dot of, of high concentrated glyphosate um, that will transport through the, um, the roots and kill it off. So that's working really well for us. So that's what we were spending our time doing. Um, it's been a beautiful week and uh, no rain in the forecast. So we've been taking care of a burning bush this way and the little honeysuckle bushes. We've been doing autumn olive, which is the same type of a thing. It's bright green in the, on the forest floor so uh, we, can, we can find that easily. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit about burning bush because there are, there are native burning bushes. There are native, this is Euonymus, um, Euonymus allatus, um, which refers to the fact that it's winged Euonymus, and if you look, it has a, a corky ridge on the, the stem. But that corky ridge is not always there, so that's not necessarily the best way to identify um, which is the winged Euonymus. Um, but the winged Euonymus, or burning bush, has a very short petiole, the stem of the leaf is very short. It's almost, here you can see these stems, I don't know if it shows up well, um, the, the leaves are practically come out of the, the stem with no little petiole there. That's, that's what the way burning bush or winged euonymus looks. The native euonymus uh, has more of a stem. We'll go and I'll show you what the, the native looks like because we have um, we have one of the native Euonymus. There's, there's three, three, three native um, Euonymi, <laughs> Euonymuses um, in this area. There's um, Wahoo, I'm gonna go with the common names I use, um, Wahoo, and you can look down and see what the, uh, the scientific name is for that, um, which we've got scattered around on this property. There's also Hearts of Burston, um, which, um, we do not have on our property, but it is found in the area. Um, and then there is uh, the running strawberry bush, which is just a low, um, kind of a creeping uh, euonymus. Uh, all, all, all different, and it's probably a good idea to know the difference between them. 
So here we have the um, Euonymus alatus, the winged Euonymus with the burning bush, and it has the very short petiole. What I have over my head here is the Euonymus ultrapurpureus, which, um, if you look at the, the leaves, they have a definite petiole, okay? I think the keys say this has um, less than three millimeters and this has greater than five millimeters. Um, but it's, it's a noticeable thing. You know, the color, it does get a nice red color. Um, I've, I see people in um, uh, different forums talk about how, oh, you know, pull out your, your burning bush and put in the, the native one. To be honest, I don't think that they, do. they serve the same function in your landscape. Um, it's not as dense. It doesn't have as, as red a color. You know, planting it is fine, but um, I don't think they, they serve the same function. Um, the winged euonymus has a, a fruit, a little, which has a little red arrow, a little fleshy part with a, like a dark um, leaf on it. Um, I'll show you that. Uh, whereas the, um, the wahoo, if you can get in on that, has this four-parted piece here where it has like an orangish-red arrow or fruit inside there and then this four-parted seed coat on it. So they look very, very different. Hearts of Burston, the Euonymus um, americanus, the fruit is is bumpy. It looks very different. I'll try to put in a picture of that too. So it also looks very different. Um, and then again, the the running um, strawberry bush is just a low thing, so that doesn't look like that. Um, so hopefully that helps in determining which is the uh, burning bush that we want to get rid of. Remember, no petioles, and what we want to keep, which has the petioles. So the reason I'm focusing on just the wahoo, basically, um, and comparing that to the, the winged euonymus or the burning bush, is that these are the two that are, are reddish in the fall, and that's what we're looking at. We're going through the woods and looking for those, those red flags. Euonymus americanus, the um, hearts of Burston, uh, may be a little bit pinkish in the fall. To be honest, I'm not familiar with it that well, so that I don't know exactly what it looks like, but um, we don't have it on our property, or I've never seen it on our property, so it's not something that I'm trying to, to weed that out. Um, if you have experience with the hearts of Burston and you want to tell me about what the leaves are like in the fall, I would appreciate knowing about that. And I'm sure other people would too. You know, is it something that would be confused for uh, burning bush? Does it turn kind of a, a bright red color? So that would be a good thing to, to look at. You know, the other thing to, to, uh, to look at when comparing the, the wahoo, the eastern wahoo, and the burning bush is that the leaves of the wahoo have a slight hairiness to them. So if you look at it under a hand lens, and unfortunately you pretty much can only see it under a hand lens, um, you can see just tiny hairs on both the top surface and on the bottom surface, mostly on the bottom surface. Um, if you look at the leaves of burning bush, which is unfortunately too close and easily <laughs> accessible here, if I look at the burning bush, um, the, the leaves are smooth, um, without hairs, or, or glabrous, we would say. Uh, so without hairs, um, although maybe you, there's a little bit of hairs on the, the, uh, um, the veins on the bottom, but you wouldn't call it hairy. Um, I wouldn't call this hairy either. It's just very fine hairs. So anyway, that's another way to tell the two apart. Now, I will say that when I'm out here weeding things, there's another plant out here that has a similar color, not so similar to this bright red color, but similar to this more bronzy red color that um, I have a problem and I have to stop and think about whether I'm weeding the right thing. And that's black haw, um, cherry leaf by Burnham, which when it's growing small, um, its leaves turn red in the fall too. I think it's a very pretty plant, um, but the little plants are reddish. So let's go look at that. So this is the black haw or cherry leaf by Burnham. And if you come in here, you can see that, again, similar color, this is a um, bright color, but you can see that there's um, a definite petiole as opposed to the, uh, the burning bush. Um, this, you can see right next to it, if it's any, any bigger, you can see this has the very traditional look of the black haw where it's got this bumpy, warty bark that um, is uh, 
convex. Um, so that's cherry leaf viburnum. Let me grab, there's, I see a, a burning bush right behind me here. So this is one that I wouldn't try to pull this one. We would cut it and treat it. Um, you know, I think it's important to know, if you look at it, you can kind of see where it's a little corky, but it doesn't really have the strong wings that some of them have. Um, but what we're most concerned about right now is if you look at the, the leaves, the, uh, the leaves have very little petiole. So hopefully that's useful. Um, I will try to, hopefully I've put in some other pictures to, uh, to supplement what we've done here because uh, it is later in the season than I would like, so it's harder to find material. Uh, but I have some other material to show what the, the fruiting structures look like. Um, hopefully that's useful to you. Um, obviously, we want to get rid of this because despite what people keep telling me when I post uh, videos about burning bush and they say, oh, it's not invasive, uh, we've got a lot of it. And uh, there's areas of our forest floor that are just carpeted with it. And uh, um, I would rather be doing other things other than getting rid of, uh, of burning bush. So there we go. If you have comments, put them in the comments section. Um, if you've got other ways of telling these things apart, um, we'd all like to learn. So make a comment about it. But thanks for coming.